Back here on the Meat Speak Podcast, powered by the certified Angus Beef brand. You know, the year 2020 uh, obviously was not the favorite year for an awful lot of reasons. Uh, but but one of the reasons that we wanted to talk about today actually has everything to do with uh, a, a culinary legend who was lost just before the, the, the turn of the new year. We're, we're talking about Mike Mills, right? Actually nicknamed the legend. And as we go, we're going to visit with some of some of Mike's closest friends in the industry. Uh, but here within our uh, inner circle here at Certified Angus Beef, uh, we have our own uh, really strong connection to Mike Mills. And, and it's certainly been led by, uh, if you've followed the podcast for any amount of time, uh, our sort of barbecue liaison, our barbecue aficionado, Chef Michael Ollier. So he has joined us in studio. Chef, how you doing? I'm great. Excellent, excellent. You know, I, I wanted to reach out to you because you probably more so than anybody else here. I think we've all touched Mike in in various ways. I have a kind of a ridiculous story of showing up from a Whataburger at 3 a.m. and that Amarillo. was us, right? Yeah, that, yeah, I, I believe so. <laughs> that, that said, um, but you you know you were you were you were closer to Mike than I think any of us here. So if you could talk to us about that, I mean, you sort of went on. We've talked to it on previous podcasts about your journey into barbecue from yeah. from fine dining from you know from French chefing. Um, Mike was very much one on that journey, right? Yeah, for sure. Fortunate enough to have met Mike, boy, years ago. And I think it was at a National Barbecue Association yearly event that they hold. Um, and met Mike and knew that that he was special. And by by his reputation, of course. But then when you have moments to sit by the legend, then you realize really the special nature of this man. Um, he is an inherent giver. And I think that's what barbecue and the barbecue family is all about. And I think if you put like the poster guy, like that's the legend for a reason. Um, and I think many people would share this kind of this, the same sentiment I'm sharing is that time spent with Mike, you knew was special and it didn't matter, Brian, like this, did, this is what was great about Mike. He met you where you were in your journey and as accomplished as he has been in the competition circuit and everything else with, with what he's doing at seven at 17th street and the, the, the legacy left behind is, is so amazing, but he's still able to come to where you are in your journey and help everyone, no matter where they are in the barbecue. So I'm talking about if you're thinking about open up a barbecue joint, he's actually used as a consultant for something like that. Some big names in barbecue have done just that. Or if you're just a backyard enthusiast, I'm struggling with a brisket. I'm struggling with some ribs. He'll tell you exactly how to do it. So time spent with him, and I've had fortunate enough to either prep and learning about whole hog, doing that, or even like scraping some fat off some back ribs at a, at a national barbecue event that we kind of helped him like in the middle of the night, right? He's, he's there, hands on, scraping the excess fat because he knew that every single bite needed to be special. So he's passed a lot on to me, and I'm grateful for that. But it's this last weekend at... Um, I was able to go to the Murfreesboro cookout and this was the first one without Mike. And it was the first time that we had done, well, it was the annual conference that we would normally have done. And I would never, I've never been able to go to this. So I was able to have special time with Amy and that, and, and that was, that was a great memorial to a special man. So great connection with an amazing guy. Outstanding. Uh, Chef, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not going to turn you loose just yet. We're going to uh, roll into some, uh, some, some, some friends of Mike to, to share their thoughts and their reflections. But there is a, a poem that I believe you actually have captured that I would like to, to go ahead and steal the audio of and, 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 and plug that in here if, uh, if, if, if we can actually figure Great that out. Great idea. We'll it. figure that That's out. It was right. a special <laughs> moment to share for sure. Yeah. So if, if, you, if you can, I think we're actually going to roll with that. And then, uh, and then Amy Mills, Mike's daughter and business partner, um, is going to join us to talk, uh, talk a bit about her dad. But can you give us, uh, can you set the stage? Tell us about this poem. Well, let's see. I mean, this was, was kind of an impromptu toast to Mike for the first time that he wasn't at the Murphy's, Murfreesboro cookout. And it was put together by Brian Neely. He's the guy from Smoke Freaks. So let's give credit where credit's due. It was a toast with, I think that, what is that apple flavored Bud or Budweiser drink? Do you know what it is? Uh, I I don't even know, but it's it's kind of like that cidery tasting. It was it was actually pretty delicious. I'm not really a bud drinker, but it was actually really good. <laughs> and maybe it tasted especially sweet, knowing the sentiment and what we were doing that morning. Um, I mean, Mike Mills, his boots were right there, and the the uh, the water tank of Murfreesboro is right there in the background, and 
it was a special morning. Those that actually heard this poem were, were really touched, and um, it's worth sharing with a larger audience for sure. And I've done that, and I've loved it, and it's my honor today to offer this toast. So now that we've fired all the smokers and grills, we gather to pay tribute to a man named Mills. For Mike's not with us, nine months gone by. We call him the legend. Now let's review why. He always had vision for this wonderful town. He started a dental lab making implants and crowns, but that gave no hint of who Mike would become. I mean, the man served barbecue on Air Force One. He was a mentor to many and a friend to all. In his first time at Memphis, GC overall. He won half a million trophies and restaurant acclaim, so it's really no wonder he's in the Q Hall of Fame. And though I offer this toast under a bittersweet cloud, I know Mike's up there looking down at us proud. So if you get in a jam, whether in life or in Q, just stop for a minute. Ask what would Mike do? Good luck, everybody. Back here on the Meat Speak podcast, powered by the certified Angus Beef brand. Brian Schaff, I am standing in the fairgrounds in Lynchburg, Tennessee, which if you don't know what Lynchburg, Tennessee is famous for, it is the world's number one brand of Tennessee whiskey, Jack Daniels. Every drop of it uh, is actually made right here in Lynchburg. If you want to learn more, go back to season one. We have an episode with the former master distiller of Jack Daniels, Jeff Arnett. You can get all the details on the Jack and the competition while we're here. That said, the Jack World Barbecue Championships happens every year. In itself could kind of be its own, you know, hour and a half long discussion point on on all the things that happen here. But we wanted to take today because this is the first Jack we've had in a long time where there's a familiar face uh, who's missing, right? And that, of course, we're talking about uh, Mike Mills, the the legend, right? And and when you're called the legend by your peers in these circles, that should kind of tell you all you need to know about the the individual himself. But if you if you don't know Mike, he's got a fascinating story. Um, but he runs 17th Street Barbecue in Murfreesboro, Illinois, and a second location nearby as well. But but he really sort of made his name in competition barbecue circuits. He's a four-time world champion. He's won the Jack. He's won Memphis in May multiple times. The, in the popular vernacular of, of mainstream, he is a legend. Like And, and, and who better to talk about this uh, than his daughter, for one, but also... A, a, a barbecue, uh, a barbecue legend in her own right. Mike's Mike's right hand woman, uh, his daughter in everything that he's done, including co-publishing uh, *Peace, Love, and Barbecue*, which received a James Beard nomination in 2006. Amy Mills. Amy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. Oh, we're. Oh my gosh, this is. I'm. I'm so happy to to be down here. Of course, this has got to be. Uh, you know, a little surreal, a little different for you. Obviously, this is the first one you've you've done without your dad. Huh? Is there, um, you know, going through a lot of memories in your head as as you're getting ready for the judging today? So many memories. Uh, when just pulling into town, uh, is very bittersweet. This whole year will just be a year of firsts, and I'm. Steal, I have steeled myself for that, but it doesn't. It definitely hits you as you drive through, and then especially as I walked down the hill and saw all the cookers and all of our friends, um, and he's missing. So that's really tough. You know, it, if you could t- tell us ab- about your dad, because I mean, it's it's a really easy rabbit hole to fall down, especially when you start to realize there was a dentistry back background in there before anything that had to do with barbecue. Well, my dad did so many things in his life, but barbecue is really the common thread that ran through his entire life, from the time he was an infant in his crib to the time he passed away, um, you know, building the 17th Street Empire. And I think what he was most proud of is that he inherently knew that barbecue brings people together and that barbecue could help save our little town. And I'm not sure save is the right word, but it definitely is a main attraction in town. And on any given day, we have people from four or five states or countries who are visiting at 17th Street. So that is so special to us that we are able to, uh, you know, be a a shrine to which people flock. And, And he built that. And he would always tell you, the plan is there is no plan. It all happened very organically. But he is, was so smart and so clever and um, just so genuinely good. And that goodness drew 
good people to him. And, you know, I think if he is to be known for anything, it is that generosity is a recipe for success. And he gave away freely knowledge and helped so many other people come up in the barbecue world. Really, so many things the barbecue is today can be directly attributed back to him. And I'm really proud of that, and I know deep down he was proud of that too, although he would never talk about that. You know, it, you're exactly right. And, and you, you start to learn about Mike Mills. You start to realize the, the reach that he had because of not only who he was, but the ability that he had to, to just make really good barbecue, uh, whether it be whole hog or, you know, of course, we're always prone to the brisket in our, in our circles. Um, but but talk about that. I mean, you talk about the, the people that he would have helped. I mean, you know, Blue Smoke in New York City has his fingerprints on it. You, you mentioned Michael Simon. A lot of these culinary bastions have a direct link with your dad. Well, so many people were drawn to him. And through our on cue classes, we helped incubate dozens and dozens of barbecue restaurants. And in fact, when he passed away, I heard from literally every continent except Antarctica. We have we have no reach in Antarctica, but you know, I mean, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, Russia, the, the Ukraine, England, France, Germany. It was unbelievable the number of people who have come to 17th Street, come to one of our classes, and then started their own brand of barbecue elsewhere. And what he really believed was that he was not ever trying to teach you what to do or what his flavors are, showing you what worked for him and hoping that you took that and put your own spin on it because that's the beauty of barbecue. No two barbecues are the same. And every barbecue is somebody's favorite. Excellent. How about for yourself? Was, uh, was, was barbecue always in the cards for you or, or did you have uh, we talked to a lot of family like farms and, and it's like the kids go off they do their thing and they're like oh I, I actually do think I want to do this right that's exactly what happened I went away to Mizzou to journalism school and lived briefly in Dallas but a much longer stint in Boston doing marketing and PR for a variety of companies and then around 2000 I took all of that knowledge and came back and did it at 17th Street. Most of that time living still in Boston, but traveling back and forth frequently. And now I am um, happily ensconced in Southern Illinois, even though I do still have my home in Hingham, Massachusetts. I may never get there again, but I do still have a very expensive storage unit there. <laughs> Outstanding. So uh, if you could, before before we turn you loose, because I hear our, our pal Chip Chapman, the MC of the, of the competition here, uh, calling the judges in soon, but I guess I guess can you give us the state of 17th Street? Obviously, um, you know I guess what, what what's what's in store? What's around the corner? What's the future look like for you guys? Sure, we are rocking and rolling. We are still obviously in the middle of a pandemic, even though people think we're not. Um, we are, have been ravaged by that, and we're trying to right the ship a little bit. But we've opened a barbecue sauce factory. We're building a coffee shop. We have our two restaurants, event center, catering mail order on Q classes are going to ramp up again in 2022 so we are not going to skip a beat we're going to weather this storm and find the people we need to um, get back open fully we are closed a couple of days a week just due to staffing issues but we are so lucky to have such a deep um, group of people who've been with us from anywhere from 8 to 22 years which is unbelievable in the restaurant industry. So now we're just trying to add that next layer of people to become those long timers at 17th Street. We plan to you know, build upon and honor the legacy my dad left us. He left us a great roadmap to follow. We know exactly what to do. We just have to do what would Mike Mills do and we're all gonna be okay. Excellent. Also, I, I have yet to make the pilgrimage to Murfreesboro. I've heard rumor there is a warehouse that contains all the trophies. How many trophies are we talking about? It doesn't really contain all the trophies because lots of trophies were given to other people to take home, but there's quite a storehouse up there and it's a real fun photo op. That's excellent. Miss Amy Mills, I don't want to keep you from judging. This is a prestigious honor. That said, thank you so much for taking time to join us. You're going to hear some other familiar faces, especially if you're in, involved in the world of barbecue, and you'll probably hear some people that you recognize even if you aren't in the world of barbecue. But we're here to honor the, the, the life and contributions of the great Mike Mills uh, on the Meat Speak podcast. Amy Mills, thank you so much for taking time. Thank you so much. And the fact that you have chosen to honor my dad means so much. He was a huge fan of certified Angus beef. He loved the time he spent on field trips with you and having you all at our warehouse in Murfreesboro. And we look forward to continuing that relationship.
All right, back on the Meat Speak podcast, coming to you from the Jack Daniels World Barbecue Championships. Next to me, actually, former podcast guest, but if you're talking about the uh, the, the the round table of barbecue icons, he certainly has a seat there. Mr. Chris Lilly from Big Bob Gibson's in Decatur, Alabama. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic, but th- that introduction just means that I'm old, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, one of the things we're talking about today uh, is a, is a, we're, we're paying tribute to a guy who is a, a longtime friend of yours, Mr. Mike Mills. Uh, can you talk to us about that? I mean, as somebody, obviously, the big Bob Gibson name, uh, you know, it, through the through the history of barbecue, I mean, you know, it goes back, you know, almost 100 years by now. But, you know, the, the family, your wife's family, you guys are so interwoven in the barbecue world. You've crossed paths many, many times with the Mills family, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, when I started barbecuing and getting out, Mike was already here. He was already doing it. He was already a veteran. And that was what's so great about Mike. Uh, you know, whether you're a competitive cooker, uh, he's done it. He's a world champion many times over. Whether you are an entre- entrepreneur, he's done it. Whether you are a family-owned barbecue uh, business or restaurant, he's done it. He is in every facet of barbecue, barbecue leadership all across the country with the NBBQA. I mean, he's been there and he does it. More important about Mike is he's not only done it, he's willing to share his experiences, his mistakes, and all the opportunities. He's willing to sit down with you, especially if you're new, and talk to you honestly about the barbecue industry, give you input and guidance. That was Mike Mills. He was a friend in barbecue. He was especially friend uh, the people, to the people who needed it the most, who needed the most help, who needed that pat on the back. Mike Mills was always there. Standing. How about, you know, when you, you look at, at barbecue in general, you know, we've, we've always said, you know, if the, if the whole world was made up of barbecue people, the biggest issue we'd have in society is sauce or no sauce, you know. But you you look at Mike, you look at the the man himself, the the kindness, the approachability. I mean, that that's really the the human embodiment of of what this whole thing's about, isn't it? Exactly what it is. Barbecue is not the meat on the grill, and when your chicken wings are coming up, barbecue is the time. It's the environment. It is how you spend your time, and more importantly, who you spend your time with, while the meat slowly cooks on the grill. That, my friends, is barbecue. It's community, uh, whether that be in your own hometown or at the national level. And Mike was a uh, a huge icon in both segments of the barbecue industry. Outstanding. You've competed in this many times. You've judged many times. Do you have a preference? I mean, is, is it a little less pressure on days like this when you're here? <laughs> No, you get here on judging day and you smell that smoke and immediately you have barbecue withdrawals. You want to be cooking it. That's no question. I think I've cooked this contest 11 years. I've judged it, I think, maybe two or three years. Uh, You always want to be cooking and turning into the judges. But uh, I'll tell you, so far so good in the judging tent. Delicious food. The teams have absolutely performed today. It's going to be tough to crown a champion at Jack Daniels. Outstanding, sir. I, I believe, uh, I think, what, chicken's coming up next, right? We or, just had chicken. Oh, it was just chicken. Yeah, oh, right. I know I know brisket's coming up because that's when I start to strategically make my rounds and wait for the burn ends that didn't make the final cut to come out. So uh, that's it, man. I'll let you get back to your judging. Thanks for taking time here with us, sir. Good to see you, hey, brother. Good seeing you. Still here at the Jack Daniels World Barbecue Championship, sitting on a bale of straw next to me. He's a good friend of, of Certified Angus Beef, who actually we knew before we even had ever been to the Jack. He's been to all 32 Jack Daniels competitions first as a judge, but uh, most recently, I say most recently, it's been a lot of years now, as the MC, as the man behind the microphone, Chip Chapman, the 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 favorite weatherman across all of Chattanooga, Tennessee. How you doing, sir? I'm very good. How are you doing? Outstanding, although I'll tell you what, I dressed for Jack Daniels in November, not October. I didn't realize it was 90 degrees in October down here. <laughs> Join the crowd. Join the crowd. And I'm doing my, I know those of you who are listening to this can't see what I'm doing, but I'm actually doing my uh, uh, Charlie Daniels impression. You know, it's just Elvin Bishop sitting on a bale of hay. <laughs> and much like the th- song says, you know, I ain't good looking, but I sure can 
play, at least doing what I'm doing here. It's a great, uh, great weekend. We're glad to have you and uh, Chef Michael down here in the holler once again. Yes, sir. It's become kind of a, an annual tradition for us, which we look forward to every year. But I now know that when it's in uh, October, I'm, I'm going to bring some shorts. So. <laughs> Next October, it's going to be 41 degrees and windy. That's right. So, that's right. You heard it from the weatherman himself. So we're talking all things Mike Mills today, honoring the legend. And I say the legend. That's a name given to him by his peers in the barbecue industry, which should yeah. tell you all you really need to know about the man. Tell us about your interactions with Mike over the years. Over the years, Mike and I judged a lot of contests before I switched into the MC role. And I would always find myself sitting at Mike's table purely through good luck, except for one year I kind of intentionally switched with someone else. He is such, he was such a fountain of knowledge for anything having to do with food, period. But barbecue was his thing. He knew barbecue is a, uh, a delicate combination of art and science. And you gotta know your way around a kitchen, you gotta know your way around a pit, you gotta know your way around the palate. Nobody knew all three of those things any better than Mike Mills. You know, we've been coming down here, I think this is my fifth or sixth jack that I've been at. And the, the thing about barbecue, and we chatted with Chris Lilly about it earlier, is, you know, it, this is as much of a family reunion as anything. And we feel that when we come down here, of course, we run into you. You know, we run into, uh, you know, Famous Dave is always running, yeah. like, the Famous Dave. It's, oh, uh, you know, it, which to me, I'm always like, that's really good. Like, that's the dude. Yeah. You know, but but Mike Mills was, was always one of those people that you look forward to seeing when you came down here. I mean, is there a, a cloud of you, you? There's just something missing this year. Yeah, I think there is. The barbecue community, or like I call it, it's an extended family. Uh, yeah, we lost Mike, and I mean, since the last Jack barbecue, we've lost Mike, we lost Marge Plummer, we lost Jim Tab, and those three have been here, not for all of them, but for most. And like any family reunion, when you go to it and your f favorite uncle is not there, it's really noticeable. It's it's kind of like an eight, the 800-pound uh, gorilla in the room. You just, you, and we addressed it earlier with Mike during the uh, competition when the turn-in first started. Everybody was anxious to hear about him. Uh, and and I'll, I'll tell you something that I've always said for years, for years, and I defy anybody to tell me differently. If there was a Mount Rushmore of barbecue, Mike Mills would be the first face up on it. Mike Mills would be the first face up on it. Should probably have um, several of the other folks who are here judging with us this year. Pat, of course, Pat and Mike go back decades. I mean decades. Um, Paul Kurt, he's certainly worthy of consideration. Johnny Trigg, Johnny's here. Um, and you know, you look at just those four guys alone, Ryan, they own <laughs> they own 80% of the barbecue knowledge in the world. And the other 20%, the rest of us kind of just have to spread out amongst ourselves. I mean, those guys are simply brilliant at what they do. And another thing about Mike, when he was judging a plate, if it sat down before him, I never started eating before he did. And I would watch his eyes, laser-like focus on everything on that plate, doesn't matter what it was. And then he'd take a knife and turn over a piece of brisket, press it gently, do the same thing with the next piece. I mean, the guy was dissecting it with his eyes. And then he would take a whiff of it, and finally he'd taste it. So I learned, uh, I learned a lot about this thing we call barbecue from Mike Mills, and I'm very honored to have called him a friend. Outstanding. Your last question before we turn you loose here. Obviously, last year with COVID, there was no Jack. Yeah. Um, to be back at it this year, you know, I, I know last night you talked about how many, how many days, how many hours, how many minutes has been since everybody here has been together. Does, does, does it feel good? Does it feel like we're, we're back into it? I mean, to, you know, to, to really hit the ground running. I know the uh, what briskets coming up next. You know, eventually you get into the awards tonight. I mean, does, does it feel like we're, we're back on track? To be totally honest with you, it feels like a transition year. It feels like next year we'll be back totally on track because our international teams will be here. Travel ban still in place. But, yeah, I'd say we are most of the way there. But no international this year, no shade tree this year. You really got to have that to make the jack what everyone thinks of it as. So, for the most part, yeah, those two elements back, 
and hopefully we don't lose any more members of our barbecue family. Yeah, next year we'll be back bigger, stronger, and better than ever. We're down here at the Jack Daniels World Barbecue Championships talking about the legend Mike Mills with me now uh, all the way from Yazoo, Mississippi. Our good pal, Craig Verhage, better known as the Barbecue Ninja. How you doing, sir? Man, I'm doing wonderful. Eating good barbecue, got great weather. The people are out in droves here at uh, the Hollow at uh, Lynchburg, Tennessee, and, and man, this is great. Outstanding. You know, we're talking about Mike, Mike Mills, 17th Street Barbecue, you know, Apple City Barbecue. Tell us about some of your interactions with him over the years. Man, I tell you, uh, when I started in barbecue, Mike Mills and, uh, you know, I cooked with Gary Roark and Pat Burke and Bill Fromm. There were some guys that were out there that were just absolute uh, icons in barbecue. And, 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 you know, even then, to say the word pitmaster, that was my model of a pitmaster. And it took me a long time before I would even acknowledge when somebody would call me a pitmaster because that was the guys that I had on that pedestal, and those were the guys that were pitmasters to me. So um, that, that's, it's, it's a loosely used term these days, and when I hear somebody that has a grill in their backyard and, and you know, they may have done a couple of YouTube videos, call themselves a pitmaster, you know, I think that's Gary Roark, Mike Mills, Pat Burke, Bill Fromm, those guys. And, uh, and Mike Mills was just a wonderful guy. And he was just like my mentor, Gary Roark. Yeah. Meant the world to me. Yeah. In a lot of ways, you know, barbecue is as much about the, the family as it is the food. I mean, does it feel like... Uh, does it feel like the, the, the family's a little, a little different this year? I mean, he was such a staple in this community. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, it, I, I gravitate to those guys, the guys that I, I, I mentioned. And I just like to sit close to them. I like to pick their brains. And, and Mike was one of those guys when we would go to an event that I'd like to get off to the side and him and I have a seat together and just hear him tell stories of, of uh, the accomplishments that he had. But but more than that, he would just tell you, you know, life lessons. He was a lot like Gary. They're old school guys. They're, they're, they're heroes of mine. Yeah. Outstanding. How's the competition going today? You're judging. You filled up yet? I, I got I saved a little room. I paced myself pretty, pretty good today. Uh, we've got brisket left, and we've got dessert left. And, of course, dessert is always a spectacle at this place. And uh, so I, I've done pretty good so far. After a few years of doing this, I've, I've figured it out a little better. Outstanding. Craig Verhage, Barbecue Ninja, thanks for taking time with us, sir. Thank you, my friend. Back here on the Meat Speak podcast, powered by the certified Angus Beef brand, coming to you now via Zoom. I'm in the world headquarters of Premium Beef here in Worcester, Ohio, coming to us uh, all the way from his location in Brooklyn, uh, New York. You know, we're, we're talking all things about Mike Mills, who is a bastion in the world of barbecue. And, and it gives me great pleasure to talk to a, a really another icon in barbecue as, you know, Mike's career has spanned. Well, this guy is behind Dinosaur Barbecue, who's been around since the early 1980s and is still doing its thing, still continuing to grow. Uh, Mr. John Stage from Dinosaur Barbecue, how you doing, sir? Yeah, bro. How you doing, man? Oh, Let's see. I'm glad, uh, glad, glad to have you on. I, 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 I'm, you know, I don't like having to talk to you under these circumstances, but right. you right. are, you are one. You know, dinosaur barbecue is. I mean, it's, it's an icon in the restaurant industry and in the barbecue industry. You, you, you ran in a lot of the same circles as Mike Mills. Uh, can, can you tell us a little bit about that? You know, uh, God, me and Mike met. Years and years ago at uh, the Big Apple Barbecue, um, I'm going to say two, the second year of the Big Apple Barbecue is when we met. So we do little things. You just hit it off with somebody. And um, uh, same thing with Amy. We became, uh, we became friends over the years. And, you know, Mike's one of those guys, if you don't see him for six months, you, it seems like you just seen him yesterday. You know, you just picked up right where you left off. Yeah. You know, I, I guess, can you talk about him? I mean, you guys, obviously, bar barbecue is almost, um, I was like to think of, you know, there's really two segments. There's the competition side of barbecue, and that's kind mm -hmm. of its its own beast. And, of course, Mike has 
I think a warehouse yeah. full of trophies from from that. Right, right. But Hence course, the legend. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but but of course, 17th Street, you know, in tiny Murfreesboro, Illinois. Uh, but then you look at his contributions to the industry, right? And the the fact that he's got close ties with with Danny Meyer, right? And mm-hmm. and the Blue Smoke Group, uh, close to mm-hmm. where you're at right now. I mean, you look at yeah. the work that he's done with with Michael Simon over the years. I mean. Can you can you talk about that like that that presence and, and and I guess the things that he brought to the the restaurant side of the barbecue industry? You know, he was almost like um, what was that uh, El Calahente, where you would wait to see if he drank the coffee and liked the coffee. You know, Mike just had a presence about him, and everyone um, you know wanted his his blessing on a lot of things. So I think um, you know he was you use the word iconic. Beyond that, he was just a good dude, too. So, you know, I looked at him through that point like he was a friend, you know. But, yeah, he he was a badass, man. There's, you know, it's the only way I could really – he's a good dude and nobody knew barbecue more. And uh, uh, he was he was a true barbecue man, definitely. Excellent. Can you can you help us connect some of those dots, right? You guys are in upstate New York, and you know barbecue sometimes gets mm-hmm. classified for its, uh, I guess, regional dynamics. I know there's mm-hmm. a there's a T-shirt hanging on the wall of Pegleg Parker in Tennessee at Kerry Bringle's place. It says, "If you want brisket, go to Texas." Um, right. <laughs> but 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 Mike, obviously, with his contributions, especially with the Blue Smoke uh, folks there in New York City, with what you guys do, can you talk to us? What 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 is barbecue in your neck of the woods like? Uh, well, barbecue in our neck of the woods. So I started this in Syracuse, New York. Um, well, actually, in 1983, I started as a mobile concession business. And I would travel up and down the East Coast. And once I got down south, now I was cooking sausage, peppers, and onions and steak sandwiches. But I, I made my own barbecue sauce and make myself different. Now, being from New York, I didn't know what barbecue was. So once I started going past the Mason-Dixon line, I was told in no uncertain terms that this was not barbecue. <laughs> so I had to find out what, what that was all about. But I didn't, I, from my point of view, and I think anybody now that, you know, from the Northeast, we don't have a tradition. So we made our own tradition. And it was taking the influence of, for me, it was Memphis out of the gate. Memphis was everything to me when I first started in my career. And then years later, with brisket, you know, having a Texas influence. So it's taking the tradition of, you know, the bastions of barbecue and then putting our own spin on it. But, you know, I, I don't have a tradition I have to follow because I'm in a geographical location. So we, we just borrow some techniques. But, you know, I don't care if you're in Syracuse, Lockhart, Texas, if we're burning wood and cooking low and slow, we're all doing the same thing and, you know, just different regions of the country. Um, and then it becomes what your seasoning, your side dishes, your ambiance, your, you know, Syracuse, New York, we're barbecuing in three degree weather sometimes. <laughs> so there's all kinds of factors. What woods you got? You know, we have uh, upstate New York, there's a lot of apple wood, very similar to Mike in Murfreesboro, and, you know, great apple wood. So your wood affects what your barbecue is also. We have a lot of hickory oak. So it all plays in, but I don't ever say I'm a Texas style barbecue or Memphis. We just do our own thing with the influences from the regions. Outstanding. And give us a, a quick rundown. You guys have uh, how many locations? Is it nine locations now? Six. No, we got uh, one in Harlem, one in Brooklyn, and then we're um, Syracuse, the original, Rochester, Buffalo, and Troy, New York. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. John Stage from Dinosaur Barbecue. Man, we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. Uh, I know. Uh, thanks for having me. Oh, we appreciate you, sir. Thanks for joining us on the Meat Speak podcast, powered All by right. the Certified Angus Beef Brand. Back here on the Meat Speak podcast, powered by the Certified Angus Beef Brand. Brian Shaw, joined in studio here by Chef Michael Olier. He's a chef by trade. He's a barbecue aficionado by choice. Uh, right, you don't choose the barbecue life. The barbecue it life chooses you. you. That's, that's right. That's right. So we're here today celebrating all things about the legend Mike Mills, who who sadly uh, moved on to uh, a better place back in December of 2020. Um, Chef, you, you'd mentioned at the beginning of the show how you know we 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 talked. We heard people talk about you know Mike's contributions, not just in competition barbecue, but I mean he's 
got his fingerprints on blue smoke in New York City and uh, just just everywhere. Michael Simon, you know, you know, in in the development of Mabel's, everybody uh, touched or was touched by Mike in in some way, shape, or form. But you'd mentioned there was also that sort of backyard barbecue enthusiast that he would also meet you there. Those types of folks and industry folks like would always come out to this whole hog extravaganza, right? Yeah, there'd be quite a few at that. So Amy, Amy would organize that as part of her on cue consulting or on cue events that she does, and the whole hog extravaganza and barbecue and brisket bonanza. Is that what we call it? Beef bonanza, brisket bonanza. I think it's brisket bonanza. I have to ask Amy now. I don't remember. We got the beef component in there. Is the point? Um, but yeah, whole hog is really so. Yeah, there might be like three whole hogs being cooked in slightly different techniques by a few different icons and barbie. You know, like some of the some of the descendants of the Mike Mills team. You know, that, that have learned and moved on and have their own places will come and and uh, show off how to do whole hog in different ways quite an educational experience and we've been a, a component of that so we can teach a little bit of uh, a beef breakdown so a lot of people don't know where the brisket come from they know where okay it's in the four quarter it's great but we'll bring a modified four quarter and pull it out and show people like we'll peel the the brisket out and show them exactly where it is so that'd be our own diana clark and myself and and gavin pinto our, our test kitchen guy and meat enthusiast you know he's he's the guy so all three of us have been there in the special place of, of murfreesboro and I guess what the thing to share and the sentiment to share, and I'll reinforce, is that Mike meets you where you are. And it's, it's you realize now, and now we, it's, it's always what we've lost when we think of how special those things are. And, and, and I think about those special moments that you have one-on-one -on -one time with this guy, or it's a select group of guys, and you, and you just like look at yourself, this is kind of special. You realize it in the moment, uh, this is kind of cool. Like I'm, I'm picking up a lot of nuggets of knowledge, and this guy's pretty cool. And... And it's just that is barbecue, and that's that's what we hope, and, and this is what I hope. Like this is to truly honor this guy. It's that sentiment traveling forward. It's that sentiment of we are givers, and we're welcoming we're welcoming everyone at this table, no matter where they come from. Well said. Well said. That's the uh, that is barbecue, right? It's it's the it's the old you know the if if all the world were made of barbecue people, our biggest issues would have to do with sauce or no sauce yes what that's, a, that's so what a, true what that's a wonderful good. world it would be so chef michael Olia, i appreciate you uh for joining us here on the meat speak podcast also huge huge thanks to uh to amy mills mike's daughter to chris Lilly, to the barbecue ninja craig verhage to to chip chapman our favorite weatherman down in chattanooga tennessee also the mc of the jack uh and of course to john stage from dinosaur barbecue chef before we roll any parting shots yeah, so let's reinforce that line from that great poem. So if you get in a jam, whether in life or in queue, just stop for a moment and ask what would Mike do? Beautifully said, sir. Until next time, we will be back with a, a fresh episode launching uh, two weeks from now. Uh, but in the meantime, please, please, please uh, know how much we appreciate you uh, taking time to listen to this episode, to listen to past episodes. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. If you can find us on Apple Podcasts, it's that little purple icon on your phone. Uh, give us a star ranking. Leave us a review. And uh, just know that uh, it... It, it just helps with our visibility, and in this particular case, it certainly helps with the visibility of a, uh, an episode like this to, to really honor a great man and his, his contributions to the industry. So, till next time, Chef Ollier, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. <laughs>